Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Define a National Account Relationship Between Multiple Vendors in Dynamics GP. Thank you for joining us today. Today's webinar will take roughly 20 minutes, and it will be followed by a short question and answer period. A few housekeeping notes to be aware of. To the right of your screen is the GoToWebinar control panel where you can raise your hand and ask questions. Please submit your questions via that questions panel. Our presenter, Brian, will be happy to take all of your questions at the end of the webinar. At this time, I'd like to introduce Brian Morris. Brian has spent the last decade working in the software industry, previously for a major publisher and now for Binary Stream. He has experience on both sides of the software fence, helping to connect end users with accounting solutions and now helping to connect uh, Microsoft partners and their end users with advanced solutions that enhance their Dynamics GP experience. I have a fun fact on Brian as well. He appeared in an episode of Jeopardy that aired on March 1st of 2007. And kudos to him as he's also in the Hall of Fame as one of the biggest single day winners. It's all yours now, Brian. Great. Thank you, Deirdre. Good morning, everyone. Greetings from, from foggy Vancouver. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the National Accounts for Payables module. As one of the products in our manager series, it's a fairly small product. It's, it's almost a utility, but what it does, it does very well, and we feel it adds a lot of value to any GP client. Uh, so I'm going to be going through um, just a discussion of, of what the product is, and then we're going to be showing some examples of how the product works, and I'd be glad to take any questions at the end of the webinar. So just to, in terms of background, I know that a lot of you are already currently using the national accounts for receivables, which is standard within, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a standard feature within Dynamics GP, and it allows you to um, uh, place orders for uh, customers to one central head office. But there's been previously no equivalent function on the purchasing side for your vendors. That's where we fill the gap. So just in terms of a definition, we define a national account as a combination of related vendor accounts that together form a single organization or parent vendor account. And this parent vendor would be the controlling organization of all the group that would be able to receive and distribute payments on behalf of the children. So you know, in real, the real world, that means a corporate head office that might have 10 or 12 satellite offices that you transact with individually. So I'm going to be showing how we can define that relationship within the product and then how that flows through to the actual payments. I'm just going to get out of my PowerPoint slide and show you GP. Okay, so I trust everyone can see my Dynamics home screen. Uh, I am running today uh, GP 2013. However, this product does also work with the two previous versions. So if you're running uh, GP 2010 or version 10, this product will also work for you. We do not support further back than that. Uh, so this right now is just the home screen. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side, um, I'd like to draw your attention to two separate areas. The first is the National Accounts for Payables window down here. And it just has two different options, um, one of which is the setup. And that allows you to define whether or not a, a credit memo would be applied across the different child, child vendors from the parent, or if it would just remain with the parent. And the other one is where we actually set up the national accounts maintenance itself. So we'll spend a little bit of time there. So, as you can see on this screen, there's essentially two sections. Up at the top, we have the parent vendor ID, and then down below is where all the children that are associated with that account are listed. Again, this should be fairly familiar if you're using national accounts for receivables, but assuming that uh, anyone on the call is not, I'll just walk through the process of how to set it up. So you can either type in the parent account uh, account number right there, or if you don't happen to know it, you can always click on the magnifying glass. So I'm going to select a, or a travel company. And I've already defined this one as being uh, the owner or the head office for these five different children. And if I wanted to add another one, I could just simply type in their account number there or select it from the list. Now, supposing that there is a, a change of a corporate account and that head office was no longer in operation and they spun off all the children, well, it's no problem to delete it. I can just simply select that right here, and it's gone. Now, that's going to make it pretty tough to do the demo, though, so I'll add it back in. 
And there's an even quicker way. So rather than individually typing in those five different child IDs that I had down below here, I can use the Select Children utility. So here I'm going to be doing a, a range from to by vendor ID. And just to keep it simple, I'll stick with all the A's. So I'm going to say that a travel company is composed of everyone from advanced office systems down to attractive telephone company. And if I hit OK, there they are. They're all populated down below. So I'm just going to hit Save. And then we can take a look at some transactions. So there's two different methods of accessing the transaction windows. You can, of course, use the regular uh, transactions, purchasing, etc., and select it from that list. Uh, because Binary Stream has customized quite a few different forms to add support for national accounts, we also have a shortcut on the side here that I've added to the home page. So if you look at this uh, folder right here where my mouse is, entitled NAP, which is National Accounts for Payables, and expand it, you can see all the different customized windows that this product consists of. So we've already shown you the maintenance and setup windows, and here's all the ones that are specific to uh, transactions. So I guess first off, I'd just like to show the vendor uh, inquiry screen. So if I wanted to take a look at a particular vendor, let's say our uh, parent company, a travel co. When I look at it here, I can see um, one new field that was not there before, which is parent vendor ID. So in this case, the parent obviously has the parent reference. But if I scroll alphabetically to the next company, I'll see that Advanced Office Systems also has Ace Travel 0001 set up as the parent. And that flows all the way through to the end of the national account. Whereas if I go down to auto financing, who's not part of it, that's left blank. And you can define as many different parent-child relationships as you like within the system. Uh, the only caveat being, of course, that a child uh, account can only have one corporate parent. Okay. So the vast majority of our customers, when they are doing um, uh, payments, they're going to want to do a payables check batch, which I'll show in a second. But just to illustrate the versatility of the product, if you were to record a manual payment um, that was either done through, from petty cash or by a manual check outside of the program, that can also be handled. So I'll show that quickly and then go into the, the standard process. So from here, um, well, I can either go manual payment entry or up from here, manual payments. So this is the standard screen, but now when I go down to select the account, I have the option of either applying this just to the, national, the natural office, which is Ace Travel, or to the national account. And that same logic applies throughout this, this program. So just to reiterate, just because we have a parent-child relationship set up within the system, at the time a check or a payment is generated, the user always has the option of selecting whether or not this is just going to go to the regular child account, the natural account, or up to the, the parent-child relationship where it flows through to the head office. So that's totally up to the user. And from here, a, a manual payment could just be entered as per, per usual. Let's take a look at the actual uh, standard process. So we're going to want to edit the payables check batch. And from here, we'll give it a quick batch ID. We'll call, call it yeah, demo. And give it a checkbook ID. OK, so this is, of course, the standard um, payables check batch window with the addition of the optional field up here that specifies whether it's the specific vendor, the natural account, or the national account. So I'm going to select uh, Ace Travel. Oh, OK, I don't have any that are outstanding at that level. But then if I take a look at the national account, Uh, 
it groups them all in. So if we look here, you can see not only uh, on the grid view the ACE travel uh, standard ones, but then down below we also have uh, all the different uh, child companies. So in their case, uh, I've actually just uh, generated a test batch for them previously, so uh, that's why they're all listed as being zero. Of course, if there is a credit memo that's been applied, that would indicate in this column as well. So you could drill down and see that that, that credit memo, even though it was applied to a child, would also be deducted from the payment going to the head office. And I'd like to also show the inquiry. So from here, if we're looking at the payables transaction entry, inquiry window, uh, the same rules apply. You have the standard uh, filters of being able to view by document number, date, or type as well as just the open documents or if you wanted to see work in progress and history. So right now I've just left them all there. So these are the documents, let's see, let's look at the historical ones. These are the historical documents that are specifically generated for that, that parent account, Ace Travel. But if I go over to national account and redisplay, Obviously, it's a much longer list. And of course, you still have all the standard functionality where you can drill into the, the actual Zoom window and see the specific payment. And that's, that's essentially how the, the product functions. Um, of course, all of these um, uh, details would be recorded at the, uh, the, the trial balance level and be noted on the checks as they're generated. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to see the, the checks in particular, so I'll, I'll omit that part. But I would like to open it up for any questions. And uh, Deirdre, if you wouldn't mind stating the procedure, that would be great. Great. Well, uh, please, as we mentioned earlier, just go ahead and uh, enter your questions into the question panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, we don't currently have any questions at this time, so I will just reiterate that um, every webinar that we hold, we record and send out a copy of that shortly after the webinar. And you'll also receive a copy of the today's PowerPoint presentation as well. Okay. We and, still uh, currently don't have any questions. Well, I'm sure people are typing some very lengthy ones for me to answer. Um, but in the interim, I'd just like to add, uh, if you're on this um, uh, webinar today and you'd like more information about the product, please reach out to your, your business partner. Um, they would certainly have pricing, or if they don't, then uh, I'd be glad to provide it to both of you. And as well, we do offer 30-day demo versions of all of our products, including national accounts for payable. The installation is very straightforward. Uh, we develop all of our products within the Dexterity programming language, so it looks and feels and functions exactly like another core GP module. So yeah, if there's any interest, please either let me know, uh, I'll share my contact info in a moment, or uh, let your business partner know. I think, Brian, you did a really good job of explaining everything. We are um, sitting with no questions, so I think this is the end of the webinar today. I'll just wait till Brian puts his contact details back up on screen. There you go. So yeah, you can uh, reach me at uh, that number there, 604-522-6300, and I am at extension 103, that's 103, and uh, Brian with an I at binarystream.com. Thanks very much for joining us today, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.